you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and make sure you try the question on your own before moving on. In order to determine the effective current of this orbiting electron, we're going to take a look at the formula for the current. So we have the current represented by the letter I. Delta Q is the amount of charge that passes a given point, and delta T is the time required for the charge to pass that point. Now, the question mentions that the electron is moving in a circular path, so we can make a simple drawing showing that. And we know from perhaps a geometry class that the distance around the length of a circle is simply 2 pi times the radius. Remember that that distance is sometimes called circumference. So that would be the distance required to go around the circular path. The time required to make one trip around the circle can be symbolized by a delta t. Now we know that the speed of an object is equal to the distance that it travels divided by the time interval. We can solve this equation for that time interval by multiplying both sides of it by delta t so that it cancels on the right side. And then we can divide both sides by the speed. Now recall that the distance the electron was traveling was around that circular path and it was given by 2 pi r. So we're going to replace the distance d with the expression 2 pi r. Next what we'll do is take this expression for delta t and we're going to plug it into the current formula. So in other words we're replacing delta t with the expression 2 pi r over v. Now we have a complex fraction. We can make it a little simpler if we multiply the bottom of the complex fraction by v and the top of the complex fraction also by v. That way these v's here and here will cancel. So we've been doing some algebraic gymnastics, but what's nice about this equation now for the current is that we have it in terms of known quantities. We know, for example, the radius. We know the speed of the electron. We even know the amount of charge because this is an electron, and an electron has a known quantity of charge equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulomb. So all we need to do is plug in all the known values. And so here are the values plugged in. When you boil this down on your calculator, you should get approximately 1.05 times 10 to the minus 3. Now the unit will actually be amps. That is the standard unit of current. And so that would be the correct answer. If you wanted to convert that into milliamps, you could recall that 1 amp is equal to 1,000 milliamps. And then the amps would cancel. And then when you multiply that out, you would get approximately 1.05 milliamps. So that would be an equivalently correct answer. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen, and I will do my best to provide a video solution to it.